Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, today's episode, I thought we would just talk a little bit about coloring. Uh, I've had a few people ask me, you know, just just not necessarily how to draw or how to color, but uh, just some little tips and maybe I can show you guys a little something about like my workflow that you guys might like as well. Um, so let's let me pull up the windows here in Photoshop. Um, what I wanted to go over really quickly was uh, not lighting basics or shadows or anything like that, but literally uh, the tools I used to uh, do my coloring. Uh, so if you can see right here, we've got a circle, a cube, and uh, one of my characters, a squirrel guide, up in the top right corner. And I'm just going to try to show you the workflow that I go. I'm going to start with the simple stuff, and then we're going to go on to like, the character there. Um, so really, I only color with two brushes. And uh, I have them open up here on the left here, so you can see. There's a whole bunch here that I have uh, from finding online and just saving them for like splatter effects or texture effects. Those are different. Those aren't necessarily like your basics for coloring. Uh, so the first two tools I use are right here. Uh, basically, um, it's just kind of like what I use to draw with, is just as you add pressure, sensitivity gets thicker, and as you lighten up, it gets lighter. Um, I'm going to use that to do my flats, as well as, like, sometimes you need, like, a nice fine line to get, like, a nice shine, or a, a nice a nice line, and you'll see what we're talking about once I get there. But um, other than that, the only other thing that I use is this airbrush tool, and um, actually, just let me see something. I think that, yeah, the spacing's off. Usually the spacing, I go to about 25. Just gives it this, I don't know, this kind of cool looking gradient in there. Um, but all it is, if you can see here's uh, your other dynamics are turned on to pen pressure. I should say as well, if you are using a mouse, I'm not quite sure what I could do to help you out because you're going to be using, you're going to be clicking a lot and you have to build up opacity, so I apologize. Um, I would recommend picking up a tablet. You don't need a really, like, uh, an expensive anything. You can get, like, a Wacom Bamboo. I think those are around 100 maybe a little bit less. I definitely think it's worth the investment if you're going to be doing coloring. Um, but anyway, so what I'll do with that is, like, you can build up values like this by just pr pressing harder and stuff like that. Um, but that's not necessarily what we're going to be using it for. I'm going to use it to use cuts, they're called, for highlights in your work. So, I'll get started right away here. I think I have everything, yeah. Just let me move this up here. So we got lines, whoops. Lines, so you guys can see it there, and flats. Okay, so what flats are, I'm just gonna grab that there. Uh, usually, if you click and hold over on the brush, you can select the pencil tool. Now what that's going to do is here, I'll just zoom in to show you guys. This is what a pencil stroke will look like. And this is what a, uh, what is it, pen? Is it, no, sorry, brush. <laughs> this is what a brush will look like. Now, the brush looks way better. And the more you zoom in, the more better it looks. However, when you go to start selecting things, like if you press W for your wand tool, which we'll be using quite a bit, um, and your L for your lasso tool, those are basically the big two tools that we'll be using. The big two tools. Sailboats. Okay, so if you select wand, um, if I click... The brush stroke, as you can see, like if you zoom in, it's actually picking up the gray areas around the selection. But if I cl uh, collect, if I select the pencil one, it's a perfect representation there because there is no grays, it's just black and white. Now, the reason why that's really cool for flats is that way you can do your color selections. If you wanted to change the color of a character or anything, you can always go back to your flat layer and um, fix that up. So, these are pretty much solid shapes here, so I can just select, oops, uh, let me just go here. Um, if you select with your wand tool, up at the top it'll say sample all layers. If you click that, it'll sample all the layers that are there. So if I click that, um, we can actually change this color here, I don't know. Uh, let's go with a, uh, like a darker red. Okay, so we have that one done. now. Usually when I work with color, I like to work with a mid-tone. And what I mean by mid-tone is if you can see this red, I apologize because I'm working on a second monitor. This color picker always goes over to the other one. But always pick with like a medium. If you have an idea of like, let's say, flesh, we'll say this ball here is like, I don't know, it's a, it's a, a round thing of somebody's skin. Ugh, gross. But um, so you pick around the mid-tone. Then for your shadow, what I like to do is I like to bring it down into something else. So purple is usually pretty cool. Um, so it's getting a cooler hues that way. Um, and then for the highlight, I like to bring it up just a little bit. Start to get into the oranges a little bit. So for um, for the purpose of what we have here, usually I'll leave it like this. Now the next step, I don't always do this, but since it's a, a perfect circle, it's probably a little bit easier to do. Uh, grab your eyedropper tool. Select it for both selections. If you can see over here, I'm flipping it. It's got the same color on my background and foreground color. 
Now press G for gradient, okay? And select the radial gradient there. Now what you're going to do here is select these colors again. I'll just keep bringing this over. Um, so we're going to pick a highlight color, okay? So like I said, I'm just going to bring it up a little bit into here. I'm just going to go up this way. And then if you go back over to your mid mid-tone again, for your background color, we're going to bring in some shadow. Okay, so we're going to bring it down a little bit and then start getting it in there. Now, as you can see on the right here, there's two distinct colors, a highlight and a shadow color. Now what that lets us do is once I start applying the gradient, your light source is pretty much established. So I'm just going to lock the layer so that the gradient doesn't go out of this here. And just drag it in. So as you can see right away, bang, like that actually looks pretty good right off the first go. And it's all based, oh, I screwed it up. <laughs> okay, see so I have flats layer selected? Make sure you have another layer selected, and I'll show you why in a second here. So I'm going to do that selection again. It's going to fill everything, which is cool. Um, what's really awesome is you can click your flats layer again, select your wand tool, make sure sample all layers is turned off this time because now you have it actually on a flat layer, and you'll see that it's selecting what you already established with your flats. See, this is what it's picking up. It's picking up that color behind it. Um, now what you can do is hold or press Control Shift I. That's going to inverse the selection. Make sure that highlight layer is selected and press delete and then you can deselect and there you go. Now the whole reason I did that, let's say down the road I'm like, I don't like that color. If I were to select this layer, look at this, it's starting to pick different colors within that. You know, which you can get some pretty cool effects doing this as well. Like it's kind of showing you where the shadows would be, which is really awesome. But I just want that color, you know what I mean? So if you click your flats layer, it'll always select what's on that flats layer, okay? Now... Usually I'll work in a few layers, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'll make another layer here called Shadow. And I bet you guys know what the next layer is going to be called. Light. So the Shadow tool, what I'll usually do is I grab my brush again. Now this is where I grab the hard edge brush. I prefer my shadows to be cuts, like hard shapes, like, you know, in there. Um, some people like to use a gradient and stuff. That's cool. Or not a gradient, sorry, a airbrush. Totally use that if you want. Not a problem. Um, but what I'll do is select that background layer, okay? That's the darkest color, and as you can see when I draw over it, no matter where it is, it's going to uh, look like a shadow over anything else, and the whole reason for that is because that gradient didn't actually get to the darkest color at the bottom. So I'm just gonna kind of rough in where the shadow's gonna be. This would take some practice. I mean, you could get in there and really start worrying about this stuff, but just keep this really quick and interesting. I'm just gonna add some cracks. Just so we can start seeing some, some, some cool light effects there that okay now again remember I drew outside there so always you can just click the wand tool select the flats layer that you want shift control I to inverse it make sure you select the layer that you want to delete the information from which is a shadow layer click delete and you're good to go now this is where it gets real awesome now the light this is usually where you'll see a lot of comic book work I don't know if many people do it to this degree today but back in the 90s and stuff this stuff got abused pretty hard um, I still really like the look of it uh, but a lot of people, it seems like in comic books, they prefer to airbrush. Just whatever your style is, roll with it. So this is where we'll get this airbrush color. Again, get your highlight color. And I'm just going to show you over here, like, this is kind of what it would look like, right? And it's kind of overlapping things. It looks, looks a little, eh, a little lame. But grab your lasso tool. And again, this is where using a tablet is really, really cool. Because you can start making selections like this. But we want that to look a little bit cooler. So again, just play around with it. This might take a little bit of time. Or you could be not a noob like I am and just use a circle selection tool <laughs> and just move it to where you want it. Now you click the brush tool. Make sure this sucker is huge, like almost go to the circumference of your selection or maybe even a little bit bigger. And up at the top of your screen, I apologize, I can't really show this because it's on a different monitor like I said. When you have your brush selected, it'll say like mode, normal, opacity, probably 100%, flow, probably 100%. On your opacity, or if you still have your brush selected, you can just hit the numpad on your keyboard. I usually press 7. Go to about 70%. That way, it's not a full pressure that's on there. And just kind of... So I did there, just kind of like lightly press above it like that. And then when you deselect it, you can kind of see that cut that's in there. And what you would do is literally you just keep making selections higher and higher like that kind of making a little bit of a highlight. Now what's happening is that that light is actually the lightest it is. So what I'll do is I'll just pick another one. 
like a brighter color. And I drop tool that and go in there. Just take a little bit of getting used to. And maybe we'll just bring it here and finish it off. Kind of like that. So if you zoom out, you know, the further you get out, it, it, you know, like this whole area here looks a little bit too hard of a cut, but you can always, you know, tinker with this stuff. Now what I'm going to do real quick is just kind of like put a quick lighting using the lasso tool here, just kind of like the highlight area of these cracks. It's real simple stuff. And actually I'm looking at the time and I don't think I'm going to get to the cube. That's okay because I know most people probably want to see uh, a character color. Okay, so we got the selections there. Now what you can do again is just start light where the shadow is, and then as you get towards the light source, press a little harder. So, like that. And it is a little hard to see through the, the marquee there. So if you deselect, you can kind of see where we're going there. I mean, you can always go back if you wanted to, like I said. Grab that hard line. Shrink that up because that's going to be overkill. You know, and this might be a little bit better of a way to get your light sources across. Maybe throw in some render, just for just for kicks. So if you zoom out, it's starting to get there, right? Now the very last thing that I'll show you with this one, and then we'll get over to the kicker, is something called bounce light. Uh, actually, a light. Bounce light would be uh, if like the light source was here and you've got your cast shadow down here but the light is still bouncing around the object and it'll come back so what you would do with bounce light is essentially let me just get the airbrush here on this one uh, it would look kind of like this that that's bounce light there um, what we're going to be doing is just basically the same thing it, uh, it basically we call it, I think it's either a secondary light source or just reflective light and most people like to use like a blue or something like that and you see that all the time in comics or in art in general. So we'll get that selection going there. Um, I'm going to come back later to get those veins or cracks, wherever the hell those are. Get that same brush there, and we're going to pick a nice blue. I don't know, around there. Sounds good. Make sure your opacity is at 70%. And start in the middle like that, and I just kind of work my way out. Just like that. And I again, this does look pretty rough. Um, but select your wand tool. Go back to that flats layer. Powerful flats layer. Shift control I to inverse the selection. And select the layer that you want to remove from and delete. And what I'll do here really quickly is I'll just kind of go in here. I might even lower the opacity to 40% here. And a lot of this stuff, again, uh, if you start getting lucky and nailing this stuff on your first try, awesome, good for you. If not, don't worry about it. Just take some time and practice around with it if you can. Let me just bring a little bit harder of an edge here. And uh, you could also totally go in there and just grab a lasso tool again. Grab that selection. Get a little dangerous. Get a little more dangerous with it. Go in with like a lighter blue. If you really want to like get crazy with your highlights and again select it, shift control I and bounce light to delete okay so let's just take a look at it there and zoom out so to me it looks kinda cool you know from a distance it really looks pretty awesome uh, but there is some things that definitely would need to get fixed all in here would need to be smoothed out because that's pretty. That's a pretty, you know, hard shadow or hard light there. All of this here is still the same effect. It's kind of like a, you know, like look at this line. That's sharp. All this is sharp. It's not really blending well. Um, so that could be an easy fix. Changing your uh, brush settings. Maybe don't have such a hard edge to it. You could have it like totally airbrushy, or just lower the opacity and just kind of build it up a little bit. Now quickly, let's see if we can hammer through this. Uh, what we're going to do here. Let me just group all this stuff into another layer. I don't want to get these all confused. Uh, let's make a new one. This will be for the squirrel guy. Again, flats. 
And I'm going to show you just one more different way that I like to do it as well. So go in there and make sure your pencil tool is selected. And what I'll do is, I, I know this character's colors. If you don't know your character's colors, you can always do grayscale and then change the color afterwards. Um, maybe that I could talk to you guys a little bit about that in another video. I'm just going to try to really rush this one. Okay, so this guy, he's a black guy, so we're going to give him some brown skin. Cool. I'm going to grab our wand tool. I'm going to fill that. And he's a gray squirrel, so this is the easy part. I'm not going for perfection here. Just trying to show you guys just one more example. Go all the way down here. Cool, cool, cool. And actually, I'm going to do it again. I just thought I'd tell you guys really quickly about it. This uh, quick uh, fill tool I have is a wand tool. And what I have is it's an action script. And you guys, if you don't know what action scripts are, you can check that out for Photoshop. Um, if not, I could probably try to do it in a video as well. But what it does is I'm going to make a selection. And then the action script is I have it mapped to a key. In this case, it's the F4 key. It doesn't matter the key that you choose. And what it does is it runs the script that you made for it. So the script that I have for it is it expands the selection that I just made and then it fills it with the foreground color. So you'll see I press F4, and if you look over here into the history, I selected the magic wand tool, it expanded it, made it a little bit bigger, filled it, and then it deselected it. That way I can just keep going. Really powerful tool, especially with this stuff, and especially when you're working with um, the pencil tool, because the selections are 100% accurate. There's none of this gray stuff around it. Coloring his little nose, color his ear. All right, cool. So that's our flats. Our flats are done. We got all our color and all that cool stuff. And the next thing I usually do is I'll go here. I'll make a new layer called Shadow. I'll use that exact same brush, except I'll bring it to a brush, not a pencil. And I'll use like some weird color. Like uh, right now, I'm really fond of using like a purple. And even though oh, I'll just show you here, like uh, that's not really going to show up. Let me bring it a little darker. Is that going to show up? No. Let's go even darker. Holy smokes. I guess that'll work. Now, even though the shadow layer, this might not be the shadow color that we'll use, doesn't matter. Um, I'll show you what's really awesome that you can do. You can actually change the look of this stuff. So I just started drawing in where the shadow would be. Some people, like I said, they like to use a airbrush. Whatever you're comfortable with, use that. Ah, oh, crap. That's why it's not showing up. My apologies. I'm rushing here. Um, I have my opacity. There we go. Still at 40%. But yeah, essentially what we're going to do here is now that we have our shadow, you lock that layer, and then you can redraw over that layer to get the shadow color that you want. And it's actually really cool. And let's just get a shadow going in the skin. Maybe give him, give him a little extra shadow under that big chin of his. And we'll go down here. A lot of the shadow I've already done, I was debating just leaving the shadow out um, and just doing what I'm doing right now for the shadow, but I figured some of you guys and girls out there probably like to add shadow to your work with the black and the white, so this would probably be more akin to what you guys are used to, especially for comic books and stuff. Um, what the hell, we'll just make all this a shadow color. I'm just going to use lasso tool here and make it a little bit quicker. Okay, so I think our shadow work is done for the most part. Let me get all out of there. Let's just zoom out here and see. Okay, so we'll assume this is some really awesome shadowing. <laughs> okay, now what I would do is I click this, the shadow layer, I lock it, and then now I go in there and I select everything. So now that I know that it looks good to me, all the shadow is uniform and it looks good, I'll go in here and I'll select. Okay, so now I need the gray shadow for his costume. So I'll so I drop the gray, click over there in your um, color picker. And bring it down. We'll say, you know, a little bit. And now that it's locked, bring your brush tool again. And now all you need to do is redraw over your shadows. Now just do, like in this case, just the gray. Don't worry about doing anything else because those all have a different shadow color to them, right? 
It wouldn't make sense to have dark gray for flesh. It's kind of weird looking. And I think all down here is all his... So I'm just going to make this huge and then just fill it in. And I actually really like this way of shading. Um, it keeps everything... I don't know. Sometimes things get a little out of hand. And they start to look a little whack. So again, color picker for the flesh. Um, we're going to bring in a little bit of red to it. Drop it down. Grab your brush tool and just change the color of the shadow. And another quick thing that's really awesome with this is, let's say, the shadow that I just picked. Zoom out and you're like, ah, it's not dark enough. No problem. Just pick your color picker again and make it darker. And that layer is always, that shadow layer is always on its other thing. You can, sometimes I rename it to like, um, I don't know, like flat shadow so that I know. Um, but essentially that's all it is. Now this is the stage where you could grab your airbrush and go, you know, like, uh, maybe these packs are too, too, um, too sharp. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick the shadow color. Lower the opacity out of about 40%. Oops, turn the lock layer off there. Just kind of like soften it up a bit. Uh, actually, I apologize here. This other dynamics, I'm actually going to change this. See, the spacing keeps going back to 1%. That's why. Um, let's bring this back up to 25%. The hardness, uh, let's turn the hardness off. See if that helps it. Uh, whatever. But yeah, you could spend all day kind of going in there and just petting these lines a little bit. I would, I would recommend keeping some sharp lines though because it does make a really cool effect. And the very last step you would do is you just make a new layer again. Highlights. And eyedropper tool. What's going on? Hmm. There we go. Okay, my window wasn't showing up. So we have it. Now we're going to pick a highlight color there. And we're just going to zoom in. And just like we were doing with the circle, grab your lasso tool and get the area that you want to highlight. I'm going to make all this a selection here. Probably all down his neck. And grab the brush tool. Deselect it, and there you go. So you can quickly see what you're doing is you're you're building up levels, building up highlights, and you can always go back in there in certain areas. Maybe I just want like just the side of his cheek, just a little, you know, a little sharper. Bang! There you go. You can start making highlights there. Like I said, and you would go through this entire process doing all of this here. You don't have to highlight every single area, but that's essentially, you know, you zoom out and they start to look a little bit waxy. Some people say they look plasticky and stuff. Again, that's something that you'd have to play with. And the very last thing that I'll show you is um, what I've been doing lately over this stuff is this lines layer is what we've already drawn with. I'll make a layer above it and do that bounce light right over top of this layer here. What it does is, I don't know, it makes the, the shadows pop a little bit better, I find, once we start adding that blue or whatever color you like to use. I'm going to use the blue again because that's what we're familiar with here. And bring it up there. And again, oops, there you go. And just kind of like pet the lines in a little bit. I don't know. But anyway, so you zoom out. There you go. See, right away you're starting to get some reflective light. You know, like that might look a little lame sauce, but there's some special effects and stuff that I didn't really talk about in this video. This is dragging on a little bit too long. Um, I didn't want to spend this much time on it. But uh, hopefully this helped you guys out a little bit more. There's other things that we can definitely talk about with like overlay layers and stuff like that. But uh, until next time, hope you guys had some fun with it. Leave me a comment in, in the box below if I skimmed over something too quickly. Uh, if this was too long, if you guys would like another color tutorial, that'd be awesome as well. Or if you guys just want me to talk about something in general about like the special effects and overlay layers and you know what you would do once this kind of stuff is done, what you would do to like spaz it up a little bit better. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Take care. Keep reading comics. Keep making comics. We'll talk soon and have a great weekend.